The following program is designed to demonstrate simple workouts that you can use to improve your health. Be sure to consult your physician before beginning any exercise program. Coming up next on Body and Spirit, we'll be talking about how to rehabilitate a bad shoulder. So stay tuned. Nunez, Wellness Director of the Black Hills Health and Education Center. Welcome to Body and Spirit. Today we're going to be focusing on how to rehabilitate a bad shoulder. We know in the Bible that Jesus gave us some examples that if we invest our time and invest our efforts wisely, he'll bless them. Sore shoulders can be very frustrating for people because it makes it so difficult for them to do anything. So today we're going to go over a routine that we can do to help a wide variety of shoulder problems and talk about what causes those problems in the first place. So if we're ready, let's get started. Today helping me out will be Jean. Okay, just take that over the chair there, please, and we'll go ahead and get, a, get ourselves going. Jean recently was in an accident where he actually broke his scapula, so he's a good candidate for this, and so we'll be working on trying to get through some of these, and also some of the limitations you may have, we'll find that Jean will probably have too, so we'll take this through and see what we can do. Okay, Jean, we're gonna start out by just easily warming up here and doing some arm circles and as you can see already this is something that's a little bit difficult for Jean to do as far as bringing those arms all the way around so we just get as much as we can and then as he starts to get more flexibility or gets those arms into more movement he'll find that it becomes much easier to get that range of motion okay we'll go five more times there Jean Okay, now we're going to go the other way. We're doing this both as a warm-up, just to get the blood circulating, and we're also doing it for the range of motion purposes. Okay, and let's do about 10 more here. This is working the muscles that rotate the shoulder. We hear oftentimes of the rotator cuff. And this particular movement will work that area. Okay, good. Relax. Okay, now what we're going to do is we need to find what we can, what areas we can go and still put a lot of pressure on. So we're going to put our hands together down here and we're going to squeeze hard. You okay there? Yeah, I am. Okay, now we're going to move it up as we do that and keep that pressure on the whole time and then come back down. And squeezing the chest as we do it and back down. So if I try and pull your hands apart here while you're doing that, I shouldn't be able to. Good. You want to focus on the chest area as you do that. So what we're doing is we're doing somewhat of an isometric contraction, but we're putting movement into it. And this is helping run his arms through a range of motion at the same time stimulating the chest muscles. Okay. We're going to do that five more times. Keep it tense the whole time. And down. And up. Keep the tension on. Keep the chest up as we do it. And two more times. And last one. Okay, now we're going to come up here like this, John. We're going to go side to side. We're going to keep our trunk steady. Just move the arms across the body. Again, feeling that chest contract. Okay, well, let's go five more each way. And one more. Good. Okay, relax. All we're going to do is we're going to put the arms up and just let them lean back and let it stretch. 
Feel that stretch through the chest area all the way across. And then bring it forward and try and pull your shoulder blades apart. Okay. Again, let's lay back. Okay, and pull it across. And pull the shoulder blades apart. Okay, good. Okay, Jean, if you get the towels for us there. We use these for training the shoulder and the upper back area. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the towel and we're going to pull apart hard like we want to tear it in two. Okay, we're going to start down here towards our waist and we're going to bring it up and then we're going to pull it down. Okay, and up and down. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and instruct a little bit as John's doing this. Now, a big key on this would be to try and keep your arms in a level position. Okay, this is about where you can go comfortably. Okay, up. I'm stopping him here because when he went up further in this, I could see that his body was going in a little bit of a contortion and we want to try and keep balance here. Good. Let's do it five more times. scapula muscle or scapular area, the muscles around the scapula are so important. There's 16 different muscles that attach on each side of the scapula. So when you do something like crack a scapula, you've got a lot of problems there. So we need to do a wide variety of motions to try and bring those muscles back into play. Okay, now see if we can come up a little higher there. Okay, now let's pull side to side. Good. Keep the arm straight. We're doing this, we're working the upper back muscles into the, under the arms here, latissimus dorsi. Try to keep it straight. Good. Five more times each way. One. Two. Three. Two more. Four. Last one. Good. Okay. Feel that? Yeah, I feel it. <laughs> okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring your arm up over the head, and we're going to try and stretch that. Let's see if I can help you out a little bit here. When we do our programs here at 3ABN, we like to use people that have the actual problems that we're dealing with, because then those at home can see what it's like to go through this rehabilitative process. Okay, good. Okay, let's go to the other side. How long has it been since you've had that accident, John? It's about four months. Four months now? Five okay. months. Five months. Yeah, five. And hold it for just a few more seconds there. Okay, good. Now what I'd like you to do is to lay down on your side on the floor there. The right side? Yeah, if you can. And I want you to take your arm like this and you're just going to rotate your arm out like that. Good. Now this can be done with a weight, a light dumbbell, or also with like a Clorox jug that you might fill up with some water or some sand. This is working some external rotation on an isolated position. And this is an excellent one for strengthening the rotator cuff area and also rehabilitating the rotator cuff area. Okay, let's go five more there, Jean. And two more. Okay, now turn on the other side. Okay, as you can see, this side is going to be a little more difficult for him. But as he keeps working these muscles, they'll start 
bringing back the memory of going through the range of motion. And you should start to see a dramatic difference in both strength and also range of motion, which exactly is what he's after. Okay, 10 more. Now you can do this in a standing position as well, but it's not gonna give you quite as much of a stimulation as you are if you're lying down on your side. And two more. Good, okay, back on the feet again. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the shoulders. This is gonna be working the trapezius area. The trapezius goes all the way from the back of the skull, which is called the occipital region, and down the back, down all the way down to the 12th thoracic vertebrae, so it's a very long muscle. Also an important motion for bringing shoulder range back. Okay, let's go the other direction now. Try and lift those shoulders as high as we can. Good, that's what, that looks good. Also, when you have a problem like Jean has here, it, it can be very helpful to do some of your exercises in front of a mirror, because when you do the exercise in front of a mirror, you can see where it is that you might be having a little uh, difference of range of motion. So as he's lifting his shoulders, if he's looking in a mirror, he can see if he's getting both shoulders up equally, because sometimes it feels like we are, when in reality we're not. Okay, now we're just gonna stop there. Now we're just gonna shrug him up and down. Good. Up and down. Way up high and back down. Okay, speed it up a little bit. Now let's do a few nice and slow. Good. Way up. Try and push way down. Good. Okay, do them fast again. By changing up the speeds, we can change up the way the stimulation feels. Good. Keep going. Okay, keep it fast. Now slow it down. Good. Three more times. Okay. Now we're going to put our arms out like this. And we're going to try and rotate back. And while one's coming down, the other one's going up. Just like so. Okay. And this is another exercise. It's going to be working the rotation of the shoulder. And the body of is used to working in unison with, with itself. So as we're doing one area, or the strong side is going through its range of motion, the other side naturally wants to try and come with it as well. Oftentimes on an exercise, if you simply assist the weak side, the strong side will keep contracting. But if you don't assist the weak side, the strong side will stop as well, simply because it's trying to keep up. Okay, and as we can see, it, uh, let's see if we can get the arms up a little bit higher here, okay? Good, so five more each time. One, two, three, four, five. Now keep your arms up and put them out to the side and just hold it there. Get a nice static hold there. We're gonna try and hold that for 30 seconds. This right arm up a little more, okay, good. Other things can be done also helping these areas. If you're having trouble getting your arm up, you can walk your fingers up a wall. That's very helpful and you can do each side there. So you just walk the fingers up and that'll help bring your arm up into a range of motion as well. I am looking at the clock, so if you're starting to, no, keep them up there. I was just giving you a little resistance here. Trying to feel that in your shoulders a little bit? Okay, and the right one especially, which is his bad side. Okay, so we got about uh, 15 seconds to go. It's gonna feel real good when you get to put your arms down, finally. <laughs> okay, and we got uh, about five more seconds here. Four, three, two, one. Okay, put them down. Good, okay, now let's take one arm, bring it across, and we're gonna stretch that, okay. Get back behind the elbow a little bit more there. And 
that's giving you a nice stretch into that area that was injured. Oftentimes, when we have an injury, we have to convince the muscles that it's okay to go through a range of motion again because they don't want to do it. They're, the brain has told the body that it's hurt, and so it shouldn't do that. So there comes a time when we have to get that range of motion back. Okay, switch. Okay, just decides a lot easier for him to pull across, and that's okay because that also gives him a gauge on how far the other one needs to go to come back to be matched the one he's uh, doing right now. Okay, good. All right, we're going to use our towels here to do a bicep exercise. What we're going to do, Jean, is we're going to drape it over our hand so it goes over the thumb side. We're going to reach down like this. Okay, then we're going to curl up, back down. I'm bending at the waist just a little bit so it'll help me to get the full range of motion on the bicep area. And then we can control how hard we go. We can make this a real death march if we want and really make it hard. Or you can just work the range of motion depending on how strong you are. Also, if you need to take a break, that's all right. Not you, You're not, I'm not talking about you. But for those at home who are watching, if you need to take a little rest, uh, you can do so. Make sure your breathing stays consistent as we do it. We don't want to cut off our air supply with the Valsalva effect. Okay, let's go ahead and switch arms because that'll cause some intracranial and interthoracic pressure that we don't want. And you want to focus on bringing it all the way down each time. Good range of motion. Good, we're gonna do 10 more. Even the biceps muscle has an attachment up in the scapula, so it all works together up there. And one more. Now, Jean, we're gonna try and do one that might be difficult. We're gonna try and bring the towel up overhead. We'll try and push up. Let's try and do our, your, your bad side first so we can see if it's gonna work. Okay, now push up, okay, and down. Okay, we're trying to work the tricep area. Let's bring this hand up a little higher. Okay, and push up, good, good. So we're standing up here. What I'm trying to do is get him to work his tricep muscle by keeping his shoulder up to try and stimulate the rehabilitative aspect. Now, Jean's having a little trouble getting that right arm to a full extension, but it won't be too long before he will. There we go, that's better. I told you it wouldn't take long, it only took a couple reps. <laughs> Three more times. And last one. Okay, let's switch sides now. Bring this arm up, okay. Push up. As you can see, this arm goes quite a bit easier and smoother going up to this position. And that's all right. Again, he can use this as his comparison. So as his right arm starts to get stronger and more flexible, he'll know if he's there once it matches this. Rehabilitating an injury can be frustrating. It can be long term. and We get impatient because we want it back right now. We can be thankful the Lord offers to bless our efforts as we move forward. Okay, let's do seven more. And two more. Good, good. Okay, John, if you want to go ahead and take these and put them over there, we'll go ahead and get started on Leg training, even though we're working on shoulders, it's important to do the entire body. And since Jean is a very active and strong fellow who likes to do a lot of outdoorsy, athletic type things, we're going to make sure his legs stay strong as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some squats, Jean, and they're always a lot of fun. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to cross arms across our chest. 
And when we squat down, we're going to be pushing our hips back, and we're going to be squatting down, 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 and we're going to come up slowly, and don't lock out. We've got the legs bent still. Then we're going to go back down again, and then up slow. Now back down. Good, and up slow. Okay, going, keep going. Good. Up slow, now back down. Sink the hips down. Good. The important thing when we do these squats is we want to make sure that the knees don't go over the feet. We're pushing the hips, hips back as we squat down. John's doing an excellent job of that. Good, keep going. We're going to do 10 more. Good. This exercise is a safe, effective exercise as long as the posture is kept proper. Good. Let's try and do two more a little deeper. Good. Last one. Okay, now down part way and hold that there for 30 seconds. Keep the chest up. Good, excellent. Okay. You ski, Jean? Okay, this is a great one for skiing, as you might be able to tell. <laughs> You're noticing that? Okay. Good, I don't feel a thing, but that's all right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do 15 more seconds. Okay, try and come down a little bit more. There we go, good, good. Just imagine you're back on the Swiss Alps and, and you're uh, going, down the, going down the hill there. <laughs> okay, good, good job, all right. <laughs> all right, I'd like you to lay down your side again. Now I want you to reach back and go ahead and grab an ankle there. We're gonna stretch that quadricep area. Okay, good. Anytime we work a muscle, it's important to stretch it out as well. Probably feels kind of good to stretch that muscle out after doing that. That's right. <laughs> okay, we're gonna hold each stretch for about 10 to 15 seconds. So we're gonna hold for about five more seconds there, Jean. All right, roll over to your left shoulder now. We're gonna do the other side. This is a good effective stretch and a very uh, comfortable one. If uh, the more flexible you get, the further you can bring that leg back. Okay, let's go uh, five more seconds there. All right, I'd like you to lay on your back now, Jean. Okay, and I want you to bring one leg up straight. Okay, reach back behind your leg and pull. If you can get up towards your ankle, that's even better still. And stretch that hamstring area. Okay, and let's try and bring this leg out. There we go, good. We got a little bend in the knee, but that's okay. We're still getting a good stretch in the hamstring area. You feel it back there, I take it? I say yes. You say so, okay. <laughs> Having good flexible hamstrings will help keep our back strong, because when people lose their hamstrings flexibility, that's when their back starts to take a lot more tension. The muscles don't want to go through their range of motion. They get swelling, and they get pain, and they start to have problems. All right, let's switch over to the other side now. Okay, good, nice steady pull, okay, let's go five more seconds, okay, while I've got you on the ground there, Jean, we're going to do some abdominal training, just have your knees bent like they are, we're going to put the hands behind the neck, like so, we don't want to pull on our head, because when we pull on our head, we can hurt our neck, but when we put them behind the neck, we can stabilize it and do the abdominal exercise. Most important thing when we do abdominal exercise is we want to compress the abdominal inward, so we want to exhale and push the low back to the ground as we do the abdominal exercise. Okay, we're gonna start coming up now. Okay, and back down. Now as you come up, try and touch your chin to the ceiling. Good, back down. Okay, keep going, blow out as you come up, and then down. Blow out as you come up, good, back down. Blow out, good, 
Okay, speed them up just a little bit. Excellent. Keep going. Good. We're going to do 12 more in this position. The abdominal muscle only has a four inch range of motion, so it isn't necessary to try and come all the way up to the knees. In fact, that's actually a det detrimental exercise to the back. So we don't want to do that, because that brings into play the hip flexors, the iliopsoas muscles, and we're interested in focusing on the abdominal wall. We will do some variances in the exercise to give a little different stimulation. Okay, let's go about three more there. People feel that they need to do different exercises for different aspects of the abs, but if we get a good abdominal stimulation in a homo sapien when a muscle contracts, the whole thing contracts. Okay, let's bring the, the feet off the ground now, cross at the ankles, keep the knees bent. Okay, and let's do some more. Okay, again, we want to try and keep the chin going towards the ceiling. Blow out as you come up. It makes a big difference when you do abdominal training by having that breathing proper. Good. Ten more. You starting to feel your abdominal wall yet? Yeah, I do. Okay, good. Your muscles are very responsive. That's very helpful. <laughs> and five more. Good. And last one. Okay, put the legs up straight. Okay, and let's do 10 at this position. <laughs> oh, you thought I was going to let you get up? Yeah. Oh, no, no, not for you. <laughs> we have a little more to do still here. Good. Breathe out three more times. Okay, good. All right, now you can get back on your feet. Okay, now we're just going to turn to the side. And turn. And turn. And turn. And turn. And turn. One more time. Turn. And turn. Good. Okay, Jean, we're all done. Thanks a lot. Having a bad shoulder doesn't have to be the end of movement as you know it. By just getting in a regular exercise program, using these simple exercises, even without equipment, you can have great things happen. Remember, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do it to the glory of God and great things will happen. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Thank you.